What's up, everybody? We back with another message, another video. Thank you to all my new subscribers and future new subscribers. You know we do nothing here without God because everything is spiritually led by God over here. We cover the world from a spiritual and physical aspect to get the raw, real, and uncut answers. So anything you hear, anything you see in these end times, may you test the spirits, aka take the words and visuals back to prayer with God, as there are many Decepticons running around these end times sent from the enemy. Had a strong, close, and personal relationship with God, all right? Good, great, awesome, all right? Today, let's talk about a few things here. Now, there's a lot of distraction going on from the enemy. And I told you guys in previous messages that the Lord was informing me that the enemy, one of the enemy's strategies would be to use a repeat of 2020. Well, we see that here. Let's talk about it. We got Jordan Neely and uh, Daniel Penny. Jordan Neely being the African-American that was in a chokehold by Daniel Penny, the Marine, in a subway. Now, you already know how this goes, right? This is a big distraction. Now, for some reason, the enemy likes using people with criminal records like George Floyd, how the media didn't really talk about everything that happened with George Floyd and painted the picture the way they wanted to to enrage African-Americans and many others that support the BLM movement. When it comes down to it, Jordan Neely had been arrested over 40 times for what, drugs, fair beating, a lot of different different things. But over 40 times, you know there's something wrong if somebody's been arrested over 40 some times. You know, and they're saying, oh, he has mental illnesses and he was just homeless and all this stuff. Here's the deal. I'm going to give it to y'all in a spiritual aspect way. The devil knew that Jordan Neely was involved with a lot of bad things. And they will attack the people that are the weakest to them, the demons, the devil. So why is it that this white man ends up in having him in a chokehold? Well, I'll tell you why. Because that's how, the way the enemy planned it, to stir up a repeat of 2020 with George Floyd. The cops were white when that happened. So you can imagine what stemmed from that one. Jordan Neely had to have said or done something that caused this man to put him in a chokehold like that. So what really happened? Because the media doesn't tell the truth. And so the devil will target particular people to anger and enrage them. Is killing people okay? No. But the devil will anger people. The devil will lead people by fear. And he had an agenda here and he did it. Now this is all over the media. You have people protesting on the subway, just like people were protesting for George Floyd. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. Here in New York, 11 people were arrested at a protest Monday night demanding justice for Jordan Neely, 30-year-old unhoused black man choked to death on a subway car last week by another passenger. Jordan Neely was crying out that he was hungry and thirsty when he was fatally attacked on the train by a 24-year-old former Marine named Daniel Penny. Penny was interviewed by police detectives, but was released. He has not been arrested. Monday night's protest follows a similar demonstration Saturday, when police arrested 13 people at a protest where they went onto the subway tracks and demanded Penny face charges. This is Juan Alberto Vasquez, an independent journalist who was in the subway car and filmed the fatal chokehold. He's speaking to NBC News. The man got on the subway car and began to say a somewhat aggressive speech, saying that he was hungry, he was thirsty, and he didn't care about anything. He didn't care about going to jail, that he didn't care that he gets a big life sentence, and it doesn't matter if he died. If there was fear, the people who were bluish or who were there, where he separated everything, moved from their place, I stayed sitting in my place because it was a little further away. But obviously, those moments, well, one thing's fear, one thing's he may be armed. 
The law firm representing Daniel Penny released a statement Friday expressing, quote, condolences to those close to Mr. Neely and adding, quote, Mr. Neely had a documented history of violent and erratic behavior, the apparent result of ongoing and untreated mental illness. When Mr. Neely began aggressively threatening Daniel Penny and the other passengers, Daniel, with the help of others, acted to protect themselves until help arrived. Daniel never intended to harm Mr. Neely and could not have foreseen the, his untimely death, the law firm said. Representatives for Jordan Neely's family responded Monday, calling the statement, quote, not an apology nor an expression of regret. It's a character assassination. They continued, quote, the truth is he knew nothing about Jordan's history when he intentionally wrapped his arms around Jordan's neck and squeezed and kept squeezing. He never attempted to help him at all. In short, his actions on the train and now his words show why he needs to be in and prison. President Lewinson was saying, you know, I'm thinking a lot about the humanity of black people and what we're experiencing across these racist, violent United States. And I think that what, what happened is a catastrophe. And I think that we should honor the, the demands of the Neely family and have this person arrested. But really, I want to talk about, you know, one, for black people to avoid, continue watching the kinds of videos that create psychic harm for all of us, because these things affect our bodies and our mentalities. So I've avoided watching that video, because I don't need to see another black person lynched again in this country. Um, and so I avoided that video, and I don't want to watch that. So I can't speak to it specifically. But what I can say is that what has happened to Jordan Neely is very r reminds us that it's not, unfortunately, that his story is v that unique. The fact is that over the, since, since 2022, over 815 people experiencing homelessness in New York have died in public spaces. This is a structural phenomena, and I, I have to say that we have to hold also not just the murderer accountable, we have to hold Mayor Eric Adams and Governor Kathy Hochul for their continued right-wing, hyper-conservative, fear-mongering politics and politicking about our lives. Like, the fact that they flooded our subways with police to respond to people experiencing homelessness in the subway, and yet these same police officers were nowhere to be found when it was time to protect Jordan Neely from the violence of a white man, former Marine, strangling him to death. So what we I mean, it can't be no more obvious of a repeat than this. Come on now. And then it's going to lead to, oh, the justice system shouldn't do this and shouldn't do that. And, you know, this is going to be a whole big thing. Guess what month is coming up? Pride Month. That's right. And Juneteenth. That stemmed from George Floyd. They made a day from this. But people can't even take time out to have a relationship with God. Ain't that something? So of course they would do it the month before Juneteenth and Pride Month. And let's talk about that, another distraction. Because everybody, the devil's enraging everybody. Let's talk about it. When it comes down to Pride Month, you got transgender protests going on all over the place because of the sports situations and all this stuff. Is becoming a huge, huge thing. Another distraction from the enemy playing people like puppets, fiddles, and making them look like fools. Black people and people that support BLM, they don't just have to be black. People in the LG community, he is literally got strings on these people and just playing them like puppets, preparing them for June, which what are they distracting you from? I'll tell you what they're distracting you from. Let's talk about it. I'm going to pull it up right here. The debt ceiling 2023. Will Social Security payments... The debt ceiling 2023. Will Social Security payments stop if the U.S. defaults June 1st? Hmm. That's only like two weeks away. Treasury Secretary... Janet Yellen said Monday that the deadline to extend the debt ceiling or face the first U.S. default could be as early as June 1st. Oh, yeah. And don't forget to mention the one world currency that they're trying to pull and how all these banks are failing. That's right. They're failing, if you hadn't noticed, for people still in the matrix. But let's not talk about that. Let's distract with everything else. Oh, yeah. Title 42. All oh, these immigrants are coming into our country and yada, yada, yada. And they're going to do all these things. They knew what they was doing. The devil knows what he's doing because he got his minions in leadership. They knew that that was ending and they knew what was going to happen. What does this do? This enrages a lot of people and causes more of a distraction. So everybody's just mad. And chaos is erupting in the U.S. as we know it. And let's not even talk about California's slavery reparations. Yes, 
slavery reparations. Do you see how crazy this country really is? Not even just this country, this world is moving, but I'm talking about the U.S. alone. Everybody in different countries out here protesting. But the bank's about to fail and the world is about to change. And the devil got all these people by the strings. And they just moving according to how he's making them mad. See, this is why you've got to have God. Because if you don't, this is what happens. This is what happens. The distraction, like the devil always does, creating this racial narrative. Now we got this thing with the immigrants. Now it's, oh, I'm, sometimes I'll be ready to go home, but I know we got blessings to look forward to. This ties into blessings, ladies and gentlemen, that we're going to receive. You got this wealth transfer coming up and all these wicked people about to lose their money. That's just the truth. They're losing their money and a new system is being created right under their noses as they think they're doing things. God has other plans. But do you see how horrible it is with all these people being distracted into the ways of the world and how they fear what God tells us as his children not to fear? You see what they call conspiracy, what God tells us literally not to call conspiracy. Don't be in dread the same way they are. See, we are excited. You see how this works? We're excited. We're ready to go. We're getting blessed. And everybody else in the world stuck in the matrix are literally scared. Ain't that crazy? I ain't even thinking about this stuff because I know God got me and many others. Ain't nobody going to take what God has your name written on that comes from heaven. I can tell you that now. But I just had to bring this up to you guys because, I mean, June is right around the corner. God keeps telling us about this crazy summer. Can you imagine all the crazy stuff that we're going to receive? Man, it just goes to show you the difference between having God and being stuck in a matrix. Peace and blessings, and I will catch you all in the next one.